How do you actually feel like a kid again? Everyone wants to know this information, but only 20% of you will watch till the end, therefore gaining the knowledge of how to actually feel like a kid again. We wish to be kids again because, for most, our childhood was the happiest time of our lives. I mean, why wouldn't it be? We were carefree and we had all of our needs met. The most difficult challenges we would face in a day is not wanting to eat our vegetables or begging to stay up later, and of course trying to convince our parents to let us get a pet. Life was easy and we were happy, but things changed. We got older, but now we live different lives with different stresses lurking around each corner. But what if I told you you could actually feel like a kid again and it didn't require a time machine, and that it could be done in only 5 simple steps? But the good news for you is, by the end of the video you will know exactly how to do this. Step 1. Identify what makes you want to feel like a kid again. We all had interests as kids, for some of us it was sports and for others it was video games. Or maybe you're a type of person that collected Pokemon cards. Whatever it may be, these things brought us joy. But yet, for some reason, we don't even do these things anymore. But why? The truth is, there's a million reasons as to why some of us don't do these things anymore. Some of which are very reasonable and there's nothing you can really do about it, where others are more shallow and, in my opinion, plain stupid. And this all brings me to the second step which is, ask yourself why you don't do what makes you happy. If it makes us happy, why don't we do it anymore? I loved sports growing up and I still love them now, but besides watching hockey, I don't play sports anymore, or except for the occasional time I play with friends. Realistically, I don't have any good reason not to involve myself in some type of men's league, but I don't do it. Partially because I don't really know where to start, and I'm not the most social person in the world, but this is just one example of not doing what makes us happy. And the thing is, when I play sports, it still feels the same to me, and maybe that's not the same for everyone else, but I'm still as competitive as ever. I also enjoy video games, and I know a lot of people who watch this video probably enjoy them too. But recently I've been seeing a trend where people are making videos on how video games don't feel the same anymore, and speculating as to why. And not too long ago, I actually found myself in the same boat, and I was looking into these videos and asking myself the same question. But I actually figured out the answer, or at least for myself. The first thing I noticed was, I no longer played the games I used to play when I was younger. These days, I was mostly just playing online shooters like Valorant, but my bread and butter used to be single player games, some with amazing stories and others with great gameplay, and the best having both. But the question remained, why was it that I didn't play them anymore? Well, the answer for me was, I tried, but I just couldn't stay still long enough to play these games anymore. It had become like these games weren't fueling me with enough dopamine anymore. But then I realized, that was it. It didn't provide me with the same dopamine that it used to when I was younger. But why? That answer lies in another question of, what changed? Now, obviously a lot has changed since I was young, but I would sum it up as society changed. We now more than ever have instant gratification left and right. So why even bother playing something that can take hours to have payoff when we can go on TikTok and get payoff every few seconds? And that's the thing, it just doesn't compare. Now I'm not going to go into depth as to why instant gratification like TikTok is bad for you, as it would really require its own video, but I will say that I would highly recommend that you get rid of them. Which just so happens to be step number three. Remove instant gratification from your life and replace it with delayed gratification. Once I got rid of TikTok and Reels and Shorts and just all the short form content, I started losing that tolerance I had built up for dopamine. Perhaps even taking back my attention span too. And I became not only willing to play single player games again, but I was thoroughly enjoying them too. If you remove sources of bad instant gratification in your life, you can start replacing it with good delayed gratification. You'll find that these things are usually more creative and artistic, things like reading and writing and drawing. With instant gratification gone, you'll redevelop your tolerance for these activities that in the long run are gonna leave you feeling a lot more proud as they usually involve creating and learning new skills. When I first tried reading, it was insanely hard, but as I continued, I kept building that tolerance for reading and I started really enjoying it. And as I got farther away from instant gratification, it became easier and easier to do things like reading. And I also got better at reading and absorbing the information. This dopamine feels so much better. And the great thing about it is you don't have to feel guilty about pursuing it, as it really only has positive effects opposed to negative effects. Removing instant gratification will be life changing in itself. But this next step is so simple, but so easy to overlook. Step four, get outside and be curious. I grew up in such an interesting era. My childhood still had video games here and there, but the core of it was getting outside, hanging out with friends and family, going for bike rides, and just going on various adventures with family to different places like the zoo or swimming pool. Not only is it scientifically proven that going outside is insanely beneficial for your health, but in practice, those of us who do it can attest to it, and you feel the benefits pretty quick. 
You need to get outside and be curious like you were as a kid, especially on the nice days. Be curious about the nuances of nature like what do those flowers smell like or what is that bug doing? As someone who spent most of their childhood outside and then most of their teenage years inside, I can tell you that getting outside, for me at least, still feels the same as it did as a kid. It's funny because I keep seeing these posts where people say life doesn't feel the same anymore. They make claims like you don't hear the birds chirping anymore and life is just less vibrant. At one point, I actually agreed with these posts, but as I started to force myself to get outside more, I realized that the same smells and sounds and just the overall feeling were all still there but most of them lied outside which was beyond my comfort zone. And the funny thing is, I started hearing the birds chirping in the morning again when I fixed my sleep schedule. And that's when I started to wonder if this was really just a me problem, or if you relate to me, I guess it's a we problem. Finally, I thought of including the final step in this step, but I realized on its own it's already a pretty big challenge for most of us. And that's step 5, which is socialize. When I look back at the happiest moments of my life, and I challenge you to do the same, I realize that I think we all have something in common. These moments didn't just involve us, but they involved others too. Friends, family, whatever you want to call them. These people made the memories what they are, and without them, they wouldn't be the same. The truth is that, whether you like it or not, we're social creatures. And while some of us aren't the most social, and our society as a whole seems to get more antisocial, it doesn't change the fact that we still crave social interaction. And that's why I think so many people struggle with loneliness. And it's super sad and frustrating to crave something that you kind of just suck at. I also know a lot of us don't have perfect families. And I also don't have a perfect family. But I think it's really important that we do the best with what we have. I mean, the thing is, friends come and go, but family is forever. And while I don't necessarily agree with this, I do think it's crucial that we have people in our life who are there no matter what. So basically, what I want you to do is make the best of the family you have. Put yourself out there and make quality friends. And for those looking for relationships, those who want to start their own family, I wish you luck. And whether we like it or not, we need people who will support us. Kind of like how we had people supporting us when we were younger. I truly hope that this video can make you realize that the feelings you felt as a kid, the happiness, it's not gone but it's going to require a bit more effort and a bit of uncomfort to achieve it these days. But trust me, it'll definitely be worth it. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll love my last video on how to actually know what it takes, and my next video, which is how to stop scrolling.